We are in a series. Uh, the first time that we're doing a series like this, it's a relationship series. We've called Relational Confusion. And just off the bat, really quickly, the reason for this series is quite simple. And I'm going to make statements that you probably have to wrestle with, but I truly believe this. That the quality of relationships in our lives has a direct influence over our walk with God. It doesn't matter if you're a new Christian or one who's been in church all your life. The relationships that you keep around you says more about your walk with God than sometimes how you are and how I am in, on a Sunday morning. Because how many of you know uh, we are the church, not the building, but we are. And how we follow Christ is not a Sunday morning activity. It is the everyday walk with Him. Amen? And so I'm saying that the greatest influence is not the good preaching you get on a Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not a laugh that much. Is it? I mean, you know, you can yeah, just say a little amen, a little pity amen even. But the truth is, what influences your walk more than the word that you hear on a Sunday morning only is the people that you have closest to you. Because they are either propelling you to the word of God or they're putting you on a path that is outside of that. There's no neutral ground. Let's not even pretend. And that's why we felt that we have to address this topic on relationships. And of course, Valentine's is coming up. So definitely... One of the reasons why we did choose this topic. It is an area of, I believe, and this is just me, I know I'm not that old, but I've lived long enough to know that the area of relationships is a lifelong test. You are going to be tested in seasons of your life to either fight to keep the good relationships that God placed in your life, but also you're going to fight the temptation to hold on to relationships that God is trying to separate. That might not be good news for you, but it's the truth. And we want you to be equipped for life. We want you to walk a, a walk of faith that is not represented on a Sunday morning only. That is our heart. And that's why we will continue to not preach the popular stuff and and all that, but we would deal with the real issues because we do love you. We do care for you. We want what's best for us as a community together. And that's why we got to deal with relationships. Amen. Last week we dealt with dealing with the lies in the way that the enemy has caused us to build our relationships. It's online. You guys could go check it out. But this week, I'm pretty much excited uh, just because there's a lot of hope in it. But this message is geared especially, not only, but especially to those who find themselves under the status of being single. Now, before some of you switch off, to so all the married people, I want you to stay plugged in. Here's why. Because the people who are single is not just young people. We got lots of people in our community and in our society at large who are under the status of single, but it's very complicated. There are people who are at a stage in their life never expected to be single right now. But because of divorce, come on, they have to navigate. That's why as a community, this message is important for all of us. We, we've built this series around this scripture, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 to 13. You can follow along in your worship guide. Take care, brothers and sisters, that there will not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. Let's just pause right there. Every one of us can probably testify of relationships that we have seen who were good and strong in the Lord 
that no longer follow God. Come on. We all have seen that. We've all experienced that. Some of us, we are broken about family members who have walked away from God for whatever reason. But the point is, any one of us, we could fall away. Come on, I want you to understand that. Any one of us, we can fall away. So we're not going to be prideful and, or arrogant to think that, hey, this, this is not about me. I know how much I love God. Listen, every one of us, we are susceptible to the enemy's attacks, to life happening. But here's, here's what it, it goes to, verse 13. But encourage one another every day. As long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Can't tell you this. If you don't have the right people encouraging you every day, if you are not that person helping encourage others every day, then we run the risk of falling trapped to the deceitfulness of sin. Even right now in this space online, right now, there are some of us that are here right now that we believe we're walking a good walk with God, but we've been deceived. Because we've learned to accept an, a lifestyle of sin that we are ignoring. Come on. That's why we need each other. That's why as a church, as a community, we are going to continue to press you and encourage you. Listen. Do the hard work. It takes a long time. We're not in any rush. But do the hard work to build deep, meaningful relationships. We all need it. And I know the stories. Trust me. I know the stories of you opened up in church and someone hurt you. You're, I was the only one who experienced that one. <laughs> you, all, you all went to some good churches, boy. <laughs> but um, for me, that was my experience as well. Uh, for anybody else, hopefully. Um, but the truth is, you've experienced betrayal in other areas, but it didn't stop you. You experienced betrayal on the job with relationships backstabbing, all the same things, but you still had to do what you had to do. We are not going to back down from what the enemy has used, but what God meant for good in our lives. And so as a church, as a community, we are going to do the hard work. We're going to disagree. We're going to be offended by what someone says, especially the person on the pulpit. But we're going to love each other. Enough to have grace towards one another. Amen. 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 I'm just casting vision for you. That's my heart. When we said yes to God, that's what we imagine. Hebrews here is what we, we want to see lived out. As the writer wrote it, we want that to be over our church. That we are filled with people who are encouraging one another. Not the... God bless you, have a great week, and we don't see each other or think about each other for the rest of the week. But on Monday, you get a call to remind you of your profession of faith. To be the man or the woman that God called you to be on the job. With that difficult boss. Come on, with that unsaved spouse or loved one. How to still be who God called us to be. Those are the things that we are pressing towards. But here's the, here's the challenge for our society today. And that's why this message is important. Over the last few decades, and it's, it's still very recent, but there's been a social phenomenon that has changed. So, I don't have the data for Trinidad, even though I looked, but we don't gather data like that. But in the Western, the U.S., their data had showed that a couple decades ago, that society was made up of between 72 to 74 percent of people who were married. So the majority of society were people in committed relationships. There was a small percentage who were divorced and then a small percentage who were singles. Today's statistics show for the first time in history since taking data 
that over 50% are now singles in the Western world. That means for those who are single, you face a different challenge and a difficult one. One reason they found is that people are waiting much longer to get married for different reasons. Some because of quote-unquote good reasons like maybe um, they, they want to develop their career first. So they are getting married at later stages because of that. But here's the truth and that you all know as well. Marriage has lost its significance in society. So people are living not better lives, but they are actually compromising more. And so what we have is more broken people at a later stage and age than we've had before. This is just something you could go research, but the majority of history that you know this new concept that we have of courting that we know that where the guy goes and picks up the female and go out and date and all that, that's actually a small part of our history. More traditionally, it was something more around arranged marriages. Not in the sense that you would think like child arranged marriages or anything like that. But the parents of the bride would offer like a gift or or have some sort of arrangement. It was a family affair. Those things served us better. All that to say, simply this. In this society, if you are married, you have your relationship, please understand that those who are single, they are not, it's not because something is wrong with them. It's not because of there may be brokenness in their life, but being single is not a disease. Yeah, I'm a single. <laughs> I love it. I watch me. They tell me, I watch me. Only I'm a single. People tell me, as we sitting up in front. <laughs> but it was in a little intimidating way. I didn't know if it was to support or to drive some needles in me. But I love the response because here's why. That is the truth. I'm excited to bring hope today, not because Jay could motivate you. But God's word says that if you find yourself in a season where you are single, you got a great advantage. And I want you to receive that. I want you to believe that and hold on to God's word and not culture. Not the weight of culture, not the pressure of it. And I know the church at large we have focused so much on marriage and the blessing that it is. We have come to believe or probably not by word but by implication because we focus so much on the gift of marriage. We've made people who are single feel like they are less than. And so as a church, I don't think we've done that but I do apologize for the church at large where we've missed it. Where we've had so much of a focus on on, on one aspect of social living that we've neglected those who actually have great potential for the kingdom of God. And that's what I'm believing for today. When you, when you think about the single life, that status comes with so many complications. So every person that is in this space or joining us online, and you are defined right now in this season as single, I am willing to bet that there is single but some story. Aside for some of our young people who are just at that stage in life where they know trying to explore that. But even our young people face such a social pressure. Like if they have to be in relationships. Let me tell you all something. Take your time with that. Take your time. And listen, I, tell, I used to tell our young people from my last church, don't go on dates by yourself. Go in a group. Like simple things. You're, because we all pretending out here. Even the married people. All the singles can I give a little more support with that one. I, I kind of I give only a little... Nah, nah, we need no late amens here from you. It's alright. 
But the truth is, single life is so complicated. You got people in stages of their life that they never thought they would be single right now. Because they were betrayed by a spouse or by somebody who said they would have been with them for life. Come on. There are real stories out there. And that's what we want to address today. But here's what I'm saying. For those of us who are not in that place, that we would become voices that encourage and bring truth into this area. That those who are single will feel the confidence of who they are because of what God says over their life. That's why I'm saying this is a, this is a message for all of us. Today, my, I want my voice to be so loud in your heart and in your mind. And not my words, but God's words. That you are in a strong place, even if there is brokenness in it. Come on. How you feel versus what the Bible actually has to say about this season of your life. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 that was a real long intro earlier. Way. I really had to gauge myself here. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7 to 8. Let me just give you context. First Corinthians chapter 7, Paul is talking about both marriage, uh, married life as well as being single. And for the entire chapter, he's going back and forth about the blessing as well as the burden of each one. But here's what he says about his life being single. Yet I wish that all men were even as I myself am. However, each has his own gift from God. One in this way and another in that. The context is relationships. The context is marriage. So he is saying, because the apostle Paul was single, and remained that way, and he is even writing under now catch this. Every word of God we believe is inspired by the Spirit. There is no error in the Bible. We as a church believe that. If you believe otherwise, this is probably not the place for you. I'm okay with that. So if you believe that with us, that this is the word of God, and the Apostle Paul is saying that he himself wished that you would be like him, Single. Oh, come on. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. For all my single people, under the Spirit of God writing, He is saying that even in His walk and His faith and what He has seen and addressing marriage, He is saying that I wish you were like me. If you find yourself in that season, you're in good company. This is, let me just bear a disclaimer here. This is not a message for you to accept. Listen, if you have a desire that you want to find companionship, you want marriage in your life, please, this is not a message to tell you not to seek those things. But it is a message that for you to celebrate right now where you are at. And shift the perspective from a culture that makes you feel like something is wrong with you to remember the words of God that you are in a good place. So still believe for that spouse. I am serious about that because marriage is a beautiful thing. But wherever you find yourself right now, hold on to the word of God. He says in verse 8, But I say to the unmarried and to the widows that it's good for them if they remain even as I. And some of you singles not saying amen to that. I don't know that. I know that. And that's okay. But I need you to hear his words. That this is the word of God that is saying that basically it's a good thing even if you find yourself in that season. Amen? The problem we have is our own beliefs and the pressure that you guys face from that culture. And, and some of you face it in, within your families. As you get older, it's like, you, you all know when you get around family gatherings. You know it, have an aunt or an uncle who always going to ask you the same question. When you getting married? Come on, you all know what I'm talking about? 
When, 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 when they go and give me some nieces and nephews or some grandchildren, like, like y'all know that's a social pressure. And I'm going to say this straight out. The women carry that pressure much heavier than men. Come on. So we got to support our women in our church. Amen? Come on, y'all. Yo, yo, yeah, yo, you know if to clap, if to, you know, like, I wonder if they will get offended. No. Because God's word says that this is a good season, and that's what I'm going to go for. For those who found yourselves in a season where you are single right now, these are the words of God over your lives, written by Paul under the Spirit of God. And these words I bring before you to come against every word of society, every peer pressure for you young people, for every person who has been divorced and feel like you are broken or used goods, for every person that has made choices that have caused you to be single right now. I ain't talking about you're a victim, but you made the wrong choices, building relationships with people you should not have. But you feel the weight and guilt of that. Hey, be free in Jesus' name. There is no singleness that is punishment or prison. I believe in consequences for our actions. Do not make any mistake about it. If we make wrong choices, we will have to face consequences. But I believe there's a grace of God that is still greater. So these are the words of God. The Apostle Paul directly for the singles. First Corinthians. So it's still in chapter 7. He's going through and throughout this, this chapter. And I'm encouraging you to read it at home. But here's where he reaches, where he directly speaks to those who are single. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 32 to 34. But I want you to be free from concern. One who is unmarried is concerned about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Verse 33, but one who is married is concerned about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. And all the men say, you better, you better get this right now because here what's going on. <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> coming right up and if Ole wasn't sure if that was your place to respond again y'all a little heads up thank me later but you know Valentine's Day and the married people will be honest to admit as much as we talk about the blessing of marriage these words stay true that we are taken up and even sometimes burdened with having to support a spouse to support especially when kids come into the picture as well Paul is saying that you are free from concern but you can't receive that you know why you've taken the concern of the world and the pressure of the world that you've taken your singleness as a burden rather than a freedom hmm. but today we go and deal with that so for the married folks, Paul says, we are concerned with the things of the world, how we may please our wives. And the husbands, though they don't want to say it, we say amen. Verse 34. And his interests are divided. So yes, I am standing before you, but I have shared in many times standing here how many times I've wrestled with the plan and purpose God has for my life, for my family. For my special needs son. For my daughters. For my wife. For them to be taken care of. My interests are still divided. Come on. You're, you're going to pretend like. For those who are in relationships. And you have your families. You know what I'm talking about. You want to give God everything. But life demands. Come on. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. But that's alright. The woman who is unmarried and the virgin is concerned about the things of the Lord. So it's not just the male, but anyone who's single, male and female. 
Paul is saying you should be free from concern, but you should be focused on the things of the Lord. And here's what he says for the woman, that she may be holy both in body and spirit. But one who is married is concerned about the things of the world and how she may please her husband. And the wives will say amen to that. Because that is part of marriage. It is a beautiful thing, but it is a responsibility. And I am not trying to put down marriage for singles to feel good. There is no competition between either one. It is simply God is saying that if you will find yourself in a season where you are single, it is a blessing. If you are married, it is a blessing. Come on. Wherever you find yourself. And listen, for some of you, you in between. You in those relationships that you trying to work towards marriage. But this message is for you especially. Because there are some things that Paul reveals here that we all need to take note of. Even for some of us in our marriages. Listen to the four things that he mentioned in those verses. He said that you singles are free from concern. You can please the Lord. Understand that. That your interests are not divided. Because he said the interest of the married person is divided. So but in the inverse, yours is not divided. And he says to us, for those who are single, be holy both in body and spirit, especially for the woman. So I'm going to, today I'm just going to paint a vision of what I believe this looks like based on the word of God. The first one, free from concern. I am going to say to you singles, be single and simple. Single and simple. Jay, what do you mean by that? Ecclesiastes is a great principle that says it's an appointed time for everything and there is a time for every matter under heaven and it goes and lists so many things. Can I challenge you today, especially our singles, that you would accept that this is a season in your life and not a definition of who you are? Can you receive God's word that even this period that you didn't plan for, that you didn't prepare for, that someone walked out and betrayed you with, that even in that brokenness, it is a season that you are in. Here's why you got to receive that. Paul says that you would be free from concern. If you cannot accept that where you are is still part of God's goodness in your life, part of God's plan in your life, then you are going to become concerned with everything else. That is why our singles are walking around with the weight of expectations of family, of friends, even the church. That when, you sh when God says you should be free from concern, you've actually taken on a lot more concerns that God never intended for you to take up in this season. Come on. In that place is the place of unbelief that God takes care of your future. Come on, as a married person, I know about that. It's the same battle. It's the same struggle. My battle is that God would take care of my, my family, provide. I have a special needs son that rains on my mind more times than I want to admit. But your struggle as a single... You are thinking about, hey, if I will get married, if I will get, find this person, if I'll find love. And God is saying in this season, you should be free from that concern. Because it's a season in your life. This is not a message to tell you don't desire finding that companionship. But I'm saying as much as you are in this place, if you can adopt that approach that I am still free, I can live a simple life in this season, then I could pursue God in a greater way. Instead of my mind and my heart being heavy with what my desire is, I can receive God's word and live a simpler life that I can become who God wants me to become. Now you singles won't like this one, but some of you, if you got the perfect spouse or the perfect partner right now, you would mess it up. 
Because where your life should be simple, where you could concentrate on building you and becoming who God wants you to become, you are stressing and trying to hold on and make relationships that God does not intend for you. Free from concern, single and simple. I want you to wrestle with this part. You don't have to accept what I'm saying. I'm painting a picture here that your life should be in a way. I know some of you, you are single with family still. You have children, maybe through a divorce or whatever. So I know you still have to navigate some of that. But you don't have somebody that you have to take care of right now. That should simplify your life more. Here's my challenge for you. Exchange the burden of being single for the freedom of having a simpler life. That's what I'm asking you to do. If you are single here today, I am asking you to remove the aspect of the weight of being single that the world has put on you or you have put on yourself to live in a freedom of having a simpler life. The second thing Paul talks about, he says that if you could have your life simple, if you could have that freedom from, from all those concerns, he has the purpose for that. That's why all of these build together is that you would please the Lord. You would please the Lord. That's what he said. Single, and this is my vision and my challenge for you, single and seeking. If you've been in church, you, you know the scripture really well. Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. Let me say it to you this way. If you can receive God's word for this season of life that you are in, you young people, especially you young people, that you have a place where you don't have to rush by the peer pressure that's on you. That you can enjoy the simplicity of life that you do not have responsibilities. But if you can take it further and now use that extra focus to see God more than any other person around you, to seek God for his will for your life, then I promise you, I promise you, you will become who God needs you to become. You will become whole. You will become the person that God is setting you up for that relationship that he has for you. Many of us in this space and in this season where you are single, and listen, this is for those of you who are preparing for marriage, thinking about it, talking about it. Because some of you, you have so many things from your past that you need to address. You have things in your life that you need to bring before God. That's why you don't have a life that is simple. And I'm saying to you, you need to take the time. In this season, seek God. How long are you going to define yourself by a culture that God has not established? How long are you going to define yourself as being not good enough? Some of you, you live your life in a way that you will not move forward with God until you think you have to get this area of your life sorted. And here's why. Because you believe the lie that that's what completes you. You believe the lie that's what makes you ready or able to serve God. Listen, I'm challenging you with the word of God. Start to seek God in this season more than anyone else. I, I deliberately brought Old Testament scriptures here. Here's why. There's the first one of a couple of them. In the Old Testament, the people of God were very wicked and very disobedient. But yet God says through the prophet Jeremiah to them, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. To the singles who believe that your mistakes is what define you. That your mistakes are the things 
that define the fact that you are single, we break those lies in the name of Jesus. Because I believe if God can speak words through the prophet for people who are much further than you and I are from God, that how much more is your father waiting for you to pursue him with everything, to run to him and seek him in this season? Your mistakes do not stop him from receiving you. The mistakes of your past that have caused you to be single right now, put it in God's hands. You young people who feel in that pressure, everybody coming up and looking at you like you're supposed to. You young ladies who feel the pressure this week about whether you have a Valentine's or not. You're going to stay off of social media. You're going to take the pressure of that, of what could have been you young people. You're going to feel that pressure soon enough, if not already. Listen, see God in this season. But I am speaking to those of you who've made the mistakes and you are struggling with thinking that you are some broken person that can't come before God. And you've put your hope in a relationship with someone else to be the part that heals you, to restore you, because you are holding on to the mistakes of the past. Come on. This is not the God that you serve. If the prophet Jeremiah could say that for people who were further from God, who were in exile, how much more, how much closer are you to the heart of the Father? That if you can see the mistakes and all that, He has arms wide open still for you. He has a hope for tomorrow for you. He has a promise of good things for you. It's time to run and seek him, not run away from him. Hmm. Next thing Paul talks about, verse 34, he said it about us men who are married. He said, our interests are divided. So for those of you who aren't married, you are still in that place. You may even be in a relationship. The truth is, you have undivided interests. So what do you do with that? What do you do with that extra capacity in your life? Single and serving. Single and serving. Let me say it to you this way. Some of you can't imagine this because you can't even wrestle past the first two parts of this message. You, can't, you don't see yourself free from concern because you are overwhelmed with where you are in life right now. Because you don't have that relationship. You don't have that, that, that part figured out. You, you're still trying to figure it out and everyone is saying you should be doing this or that. When you're going to have children? When you're going to get married? When you're going to do this? When you're going to settle down with that woman, that girlfriend you have? What, all sorts of questions. If you can receive this word to be free from those concerns... If you can get your life in a simple way, that you could seek God more than in any season. Because I'm telling you this, you know, the married people don't want to let you know this. We like to come to church real nice, looking good and whatever. But it's hard work. It's hard. <laughs> I will pray for my brother. <laughs> it's hard work. And the truth be told, that when you get into that relationship, the responsibility is more. That if you can capitalize in this season, you can see God, you can serve Him in a greater way. But some of you, I love this scripture in Psalms that really paints that picture. Verse 12 of chapter 92, you all would know this. If you've been in church, the righteous person will flourish like the palm tree. He will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courtyards of our God. They will still yield fruit in advanced age. Now I'm praying that you stay single in advanced age if that's not what you want. That's not the message. But the point is, 
That if you could be planted in the courts of God, in the house of God, if you can give your life to serve his plan, his purpose in a greater way because your life in this season has undivided interest, you would bear fruit. You would be like those trees planted, healthy and whole. You will bring forth so much more for the kingdom of God. To declare that the Lord is just. He is my rock and there is no malice in him. Some of you are holding on and you cannot receive even to say that. Because you have believed the lie that your singleness is a judgment or punishment from God. That your life has taken these turns. Because God is punishing you or has it over you. He's a good, good father. And as no matter what my children will do, I still want no malice towards them. As a matter of fact, I will fight you if you come around them with any ill intent. Yes, this pastor still need to be saved sometimes. Don't mess with my children. How much more I, I would be as a father who's still so imperfect how much more your heavenly father, who is good towards you, will see you in your brokenness, will see you with your mistakes. And what you think, he wants to keep you away from goodness? But if you would be set free from the belief and the lies in our minds and in this culture, that you can serve God in a greater way in this season, man, you would see the fruit what is your focus word? That's the question I have for you. What does the kingdom look like when those who are single rise up and stop carrying a brokenness that God never intended for you to carry? But instead, you use that strength, that undivided interest, and serve God like no one else. What would the kingdom of God look like? What would the community look like with a church on fire with people who are undivided who don't carry the weight but have the time in this season to give God more that's what I dream of I, that's what I see that there is a place for those who are single in this season and I am saying in this season because I'll agree with you if you believe in God for that family still. If you believe in God. For that spouse. That companion. If you believe in God for that. I will join faith with you. But as a married person. I am saying to you. You have more opportunities. To make a difference in the kingdom of God. If you would just let go of the lies. That you are holding on to. I, 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 listen, I can, listen, this church will be so much more powerful, will be so much more on fire if some of you let go of that burden and give everything to God in this season. That there is so much more, and it ain't about me or anything with this ministry, it's about the kingdom of God. So you don't have everything put together. Yes, you made some mistakes. But God still has plan and purpose for your life. Single and serving. That's why next, listen to this context. I know my time rail on me right now. <laughs> you realize just by yourself there with that, right? <laughs> so maybe I will preach with you after, right? We'll just reason a little bit, but I appreciate the support. Listen. 1 Samuel chapter 12, the prophet, of, the prophet of God is going to God's people. He's reaching the end of his life. And he goes to them and he says to them, Hey, have I treated you badly? Have I abused my power? Have I? So he's going to basically transition the end of his life and his ministry. And in that speech, he starts to tell them about their evil. Because the context here is the people of God in that day, they rejected God because they wanted an earthly king. And so Samuel is reminding them the evil in your heart where you rejected God. I mean, I didn't think he was too 
to favor with people with that. I mean, you go and die, and the thing you're telling them is reminding them of their biggest mistake. And he's telling them that you rejected God because you wanted a king over you. And that king obviously fell. He went into disobedience, all that sort of thing. And he's reproaching them. Well, not reproaching, but he's sharing what the, his life has been like serving them. But here's what he says to them after he confronts the evil. In verse 20, he says, Do not fear. You have committed all this evil, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord. But serve the Lord with all your heart. Verse 21, indeed, you must not turn aside, for then you would go after useless things, which cannot benefit or save, because they are useless. How many of you are chasing after relationships because you think that is what will satisfy you've been entertaining the wrong conversations the wrong people in your life this is god's word those are useless things but here's the hope that he brings for the lord will not abandon his people on account of what his great name because the Lord has been pleased to make you a people for himself. For every one of you singles who you've allowed that divorce, you've allowed your mistakes, you've allowed everything that you have done wrong in your life to define you. If such a wicked people was not abandoned by God, you cannot allow the enemy to use your past to disqualify you to serve God with everything. Yes, you messed up, put it before God. Yes, you made mistakes. Yes, you walked away from God. Yes, you compromised in your own standards, in your own profession. But go to Him. Go to him. If God's people back then who did more evil in the sight of God, the, the, the man of God is saying, listen, the Lord will not abandon his people. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He will not abandon you if you go to him and seek him with your whole heart. And for some of us who are married, the mistakes and the shame that we have in the past that still erode and destroy our current relationship, that is a word for us today as well. To seek God, to serve Him. And finally, Paul says this for the women, but I believe it for the men as well, but especially for the women. He closes off the verse and he says, holy in body and spirit. You know what's the picture I want to paint for you and this is my prayer for all of you that you will be single and secure you will be single and secure so yes you may be in a relationship you're building towards that but can I give you some of uh, the best advice I wish I had gotten before you make that step to even commit to someone Make sure there is healing that happens in your own life. And I believe God is speaking to us as a community and to every one of you who are single, but maybe even in your marriage, where there is some level of brokenness, where there is some level of unforgiveness, bitterness, whatever it is, that we've got to become secure. I love Matthew 7, verse 24 to 25. I know it's a strange context. But he says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came. For you singles, the opinions will come. The judgment will come. Your own mind will judge you. Those are the floods in your own head. For why you are single, because you did the wrong things, you made the wrong choices, you ended up with the wrong people. You, 
you defile yourself before marriage come on all the things that flood in and the winds blew and slammed against that house and yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock the rock of all ages the rock and the foundation of our faith jesus christ that your life is not defined by what has happened to you nor by the choices you've made nor by the temptations you face right now but your life can be secure in christ this is one of my favorite psalms because i keep rediscovering god's truth in this up to this week i was turning into it psalm 23 most famous one just verse one i want to share with you for you singles the lord is my shepherd i will not be in need that is my prayer for you wherever you find yourself in this journey that you will not move or act or speak or make decisions based on you needing anything that the shepherd of your soul the shepherd of your salvation the one who saves you redeems you calls you chose you that he is enough for you i pray that in this season whatever it is the brokenness whatever the reason has brought you into this space that you are single that you don't have that person you don't have that support you don't have that companion but you would have your god to be everything to you that he is my shepherd i will not be in need it means that everything in the past that i needed he is enough everything in my life right now he is enough and for all my future needs he is enough and that you wherever you are in whatever brokenness yes you gotta go to god you gotta seek him you gotta chase after him you gotta serve him you gotta make your life simple but whatever brokenness there is healing for it there is redemption for your life i believe in a god who just doesn't just save us for the future but he redeems us he restores us he builds us back up he builds me with the purpose that he had from even the foundations of the earth and i will not let it go i will not give it up i will not let go and say my past defines me the blood of jesus christ defines me it is his grace his salvation it is his strength in me it is his righteousness not my own not your own may the lord be your shepherd and may you find all that you need in him today that while you believe god for the future that you want you will flourish right now you will flourish right now that you will walk with your head held high because you are a child of god and he has you in this season stop giving the effort and the energy to everything in this world that's why some of you are running after your career you're trying to the margin God gave you, you start to put it into everything else. Come and serve. Come and build his kingdom. Come and give your best right now. Because I promise you, when you do get that spouse, your time is not going to be like that. You, My wife and I have these conversations. And there are things that we didn't do right. And we would talk about that because we saw the mistakes but not just that you know i would tell her that there was one regret i would have that i wish god had called me before and that i would get i would have my youth and my time 
because having my kids is very different right now but I trust God's sovereignty he knew I wasn't ready he knew I was neighbor he knew I was no whole he knew I was broken so I wrestle with that feeling but I'm saying to you who are single don't lose it don't lose the opportunity to give God your best and I say to you right now every single one of you who I know are single I am going to stop speaking to you and entertaining you like you are broken like you had a way to get some kind of relationship to start doing something I'm calling all the singles in this community to rise up to stand up to be counted for the kingdom of God in a new way that I was your chance to shout your amen I said I was your chance to shout your amen speak to yourself break the bondage of sin and it lies in your own mind this is your season this is the season the kingdom moves forward with people like you you are not a project you are not a case you are a child of God who has more to give in this season and as your pastor and your shepherd I am calling you up to that you young people you young people you should be running after God like never before I am looking at you I am expecting you I'm calling you to run after God with everything I remember when we were you pastors you know what the problem I used to have was that when the kids got more on fire the parents had a problem give me that headache give me that problem because you know what all young people don't, don't know most of the disciples that you read about in the Bible were teenagers nah nah you didn't hear me most of the disciples were teenagers if God could change the whole world with young people why can't we do the same today stop bowing to the pressure of this world and the lies of the enemy and those of you you've gone through your you divorce and you you walk into church with your head down like you're broken good miss me with that no man we married people need your story today so that we don't make the same mistakes we need you to speak into our lives to encourage us your brokenness is not oh my goodness your brokenness it's not a flaw it's your strength but you don't even see it oh young people I need you to share more stories you all don't even know they say some of those men they are ahead of me in terms of their kids older than me and this come and we make joke about it so one of them he tell me about the pressure he had for grad for his daughter so I I laugh too loud but I can't say my time will come but what they didn't know is I learning from them they will share and they might think it's joke you know but I learning from them how to treasure these moments I have so our next one he tell me now nah, boy this grow up real fast he said this grow up real fast he said treasure the moment and I learning you think your brokenness hey that is one of the most powerful tools in the hands of God what the enemy meant for evil my God can use for good your story is power today but you keep wearing it like a like it's a crutch like it's a sickness like it's a disease 
Let the God who redeems your past be known today. Let your mistakes become so corny, but let it become your message. I'll go, I got really fall into that word of faith, stripping this day, boy. Wait. Dr. Les Parrott, a great Christian counselor, he says, if you try to build intimacy with another person before you've gotten whole on your own, all your relationships become an attempt to complete yourself. That is for not just the singles, that is for the married people. That is for those of you who are in serious relationships and looking to get married. Run to God. Get the healing. Speak to someone if you need to. That's what we're here for. Fill out that connection card. Say, say Pass, we need to. I need help with this. I need help with that. But get the help you need. I know that we live in an over-romantic, foolish kind of culture where we have lines like, you complete me. Nobody completes you. And my time done here, but oh gosh, man. You know, and, and all, your, all, your fall, all your girls falling for that. You complete me. The young man didn't even know himself yet. Why you could talk about complete? Oh gosh, man. You big adults too. You trying to take something from a spouse that God put in your life. Trying to get something from them that only God was supposed to give to you. Come on. We all got to run after God more. For my singles, I am going to raise the bar around here. The kingdom needs you. The apostle Paul spoke of the power that you have in this season. If you don't believe it, I'll believe it for you. And I'll pull you and we will go together. But this is not the time or the season to back off. This is not the time to be walking around. And please stop believing you need some relationship to complete you. You are whole and accepted. You are lovely and mighty in the name of Jesus right now. Right now. And let me say this to some of you at that age. Where you have so many years wasted. Your God is able to redeem even time. What would have taken me to build in 10 years, God could build in you in a year, two years. I believe that for you. Stop holding on to your mistakes and your weights like that's your definition. Be free! Be free! Who the sun sets free. Your past is forgiven. It's not just forgiven. It's redeemed. It is your new super strength. To reign with. To push back the forces of darkness in this society. You are stronger than you know you know. You are stronger than you know because Christ is in you. The same power that raised Christ. Woo. Trust God's word and his definition for your life. I'm way over my time. My application for you singles. Walk in the confidence God has given you. 
for this season. Yes, be confident being single. Be confident being single and whole. Being single and secure. Being single and seeking God like nobody else around you. Be single and live that simple life in this season. Because when you get married, it'll get complicated. Whatever. Man, you, I have wrestled with this message for you. My heart is that for every single mother, every single young person, for those who have been divorced, those who had brokenness, those who messed up, who made mistakes, that today will be your fresh start in Jesus' name. Come on, let's stand. We're going to pray for you. Married folks, my challenge for you today in this community, let us become the loudest voices to remind our singles they are called to much more. That is your role and your responsibility in this community. Amen. Man, I'm going to pray over all those who are here and those online. If you receive it, you're going to go to God for healing. Just lift your hands, whether single or married. We all got stuff we got to put before the cross. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today, O oh God. God, for your words, O oh God, that reign true, O oh God, over our culture over even our own beliefs sometimes, even over our own feelings and emotions, God. And God, we, we surrender our lives to your words today. For, for, for many of the singles here, oh God, they may not feel it. They may not even want it, but they are saying yes to you. That God, your word and how you define us is what we will trust in. So Father, I pray for that strength to hold on to the word. To believe the words of the Apostle Paul. That God they are able to seek you in a greater way. That they can please you. That their lives are pleasing to you oh God. In this season. Father we come against every weight of sin and condemnation oh God. Every bit of brokenness oh God. Every word spoken against our, our singles oh God. To make them believe like they weren't good enough, oh God. That God, they, their mistakes define them. God, we come against every lie. We say for every imagination, every thought that exalts itself above you, we pull it down, oh God. We declare Jesus Christ Lord over every life today. And God, for those in their marriages, that God, we will continue to move towards wholeness for the places that you've exposed today, oh God. But Father, that we would celebrate the gift of marriage as much as we celebrate the season of singleness, oh God. That it is a blessing still. That God, you are working in and through them, oh God. Father, let every lie be destroyed today. Break every chain, break every belief and every word spoken break every stronghold for every ties of the soul that we have connected with the wrong people oh god for everything oh god from their past from every mistake oh god from every choice of defiling themselves for every choice of abortion oh god that may be weighing on their minds father bring healing to the inner peace of them oh god like you said, oh God, that they would be holy in body and spirit, oh God. That God, the inner man, will be healed today from every regret, from every mistake, oh God. That your love, oh God, heals us, oh God. Your love restores us, oh God. I don't want anyone in this space and in this community, oh God, to limp out of here, oh God. 
but father give them a strength oh god give them a courage give them a confidence in you oh god that you are their god you are their redeemer you are the one that still has a plan for their life oh god as long as we have breath you're not done with us oh god so we believe you let there be a praise in this house oh god father we glorify you let the joy of the lord be our strength today oh god we receive your word we receive your healing in jesus name come on shout amen if you believe god <laughs>